Okay everybody, so this is my inking tutorial that I have been getting questions about to like do. So I'm going to do it and hopefully you like it. So first thing is materials. What are you going to need? Fine liners are always a good thing to have and I have four of them, which are these. I use Unipin, but you can use Micron or Stadler or really you can use anything. So then you can see here that that's a point 0.1 and a point 0.3 and a point 0.4. And they go from 0 0.03 to 0 point to 1.0. So you can really get them here. This is another 1.4 and this one is a lower quality. And this is it's a big compactor. And this one I use if I just want to sketch something in an ink. But that doesn't need to look really good. So this one it, it's barely it's like. It's not that expensive at all. And these still aren't, but these are a little more. So then another thing to have are, these aren't really brush pens, but they're like, they're kind of like, it's called a calligraphy pen, and this is a Tombow. And another, another type are zebras, which they're pretty much the same thing, but I can't get zebras. They're not available for me to buy where I live, so I use the Tombows. And like you can see here, then I'm going to draw something and it's going to go thin to thick. And this one's almost dead, but you can see the like point. And this one's a thicker tip, so it'll give you stronger lines. And it's good, obviously, for doing calligraphy, which is what it's meant for. But it can do, it, it's good for line weight, which is really important. And then what I use to black out is... Uh, it's a Pentel arts brush, and you can use a Pentel pocket brush, and there are other ones, but this is the main one that I use. David Finch uses it, so that automatically <laughs> makes it good. But anyway, you can see that I can, like, you squeeze it, and it gives more ink into the cartridge, and you can't refill a cartridge. This whole back part is what you take off and take out, you can buy these as a separate refill. And they come in different colors, but really for comics, you just use the black one. So then you can see that I can get a big line, and then I can get a pretty thin line too. This one takes a little longer to like dry, but it's it's still like you just have to be a little more careful. And then when it dries, I'll show you the two whiteout pens that I use. Then another really good thing to use is obviously real brushes. But what I use is normal paint brushes, and these are like they're ch they're really cheap, so they're crappy and they're not good and stuff like that, but. But I use them to like, if I have a really, really big area that I don't want to waste my Pentel Arch brush on, I'll use these and they can get a bigger line, but you have to keep refilling them. And the ink that I have is really gray. So I'm going to need out for here. Here, this is, I, I leave it in a little like glass thing, but you can see here that I filled it in and it looks kind of good. Actually on this paper, it's really good. I'm using a 120 milligrams. I don't know, I think that's pretty much it. It's just normal paper that's 120 milligrams thick. And then I use this one, which is a little thicker, and this is for my whiteout that I have a separate bottle of to use. So those are pretty much all my materials. And then actually, another thing that's really good are paintbrushes. Not paintbrushes, toothbrushes. Toothbrushes for the splatter, which I will show you later. I'll get to that in a different part. So these are really good for making splatter. And I guess you can try different effects. I have one for white ink, one for black ink. You need to wash this one. And what you always want to do is you want to wash your brushes because you don't want them to get, they're going to they're gonna dry out and then they're going to get like all hard on the tip. So wash them. And uh, brushes that I know that people use that are just too expensive for me is the Winter Newton Series 7 and the Raphael. So if you want, Good paint brushes, those are the ones to get. And then I have some DIY like bird feathers that I guess you can use, but I don't use them so and I wouldn't recommend that you use them if you want to get anything of a of a minorly good result. Uh, two more materials that I uh, want to show you is to just have a rag and a sponge. Always good clean up stuff, and a q-tip if you want to do some really cool effects with actual ink, a q-tip is great. So now I'm going to get on to showing you those white 
pens, which this is a Uni Posca and this is a PC3M. And as you can see, it does the job pretty well. Like, I'm kind of running out and I already ordered new ones. But when it's new, it'll do pretty well. And you can still clean them up in uh, Photoshop or Krita or any pretty much any program you can clean them up in. And this is a, it's a Uniball Signo Angelic White Pen. And this will, this is thinner than the PC3M Uni Posca. But the Poscas have brush tips and fine liner tips all in white. So you can definitely get the same size of the Uni Ball with the Uni Posca. And it won't really cost you that much or that much less. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was the materials that you should usually have to do inking for comics. The next video that I'm going to do is going to be on practices and like different uh, stuff that you can do to improve your inking. So I'll see you then and bye.